Today on Larry King Now, Nick Carter. I feel like I'm a late bloomer, and I'm okay with that. You know, I feel like the, my best years are to come in my like late 30s and 40s, so who knows what's gonna happen. And Lauren Kit Carter. Did you uh, be wary of being married to someone celebrated? Uh, yes, and I was wary of even dating someone celebrated and... Do girls converge on him? Oh, all the time. Yeah, but don't men converge on her? Come on. They're starting to. <laughs> on I Heart Nick Carter. I think we're comfortable with the people that we are now. Do you fight on the show? Well, there's... Those things will make me cringe, I'm sure. There, there's drama on there. Seeing myself on television will make me cringe. <laughs> Plus... Well, I do major bodybuilding, um, heavy squats, deadlifts. She can, I can squat, squat me. him. Yeah, she'll squat me. All all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our guests today are Nick Carter and Lauren Kit Carter. Nick is one fifth of the most successful boy band in history, the Backstreet Boys. More than 130 million albums sold worldwide. He and the new kids on the blocks, Jordan Knight, recently released an album, Nick and Knight, and they'll be touring through November. Lauren Kit Carter, Nick's wife, is a fitness expert and professional competitor. She'll join us in a little while. The newlyweds are starring in a reality show on VH1, I Heart Nick Carter, airs Wednesdays at 10 Eastern. Tell me about this project with Nick and Knight. Uh, the project actually happened, um, we were on tour with the Backstreet Boys and New Kids on the Block. We formed a, a group called NKOTBSB, and <laughs> um, I know, it's a lot of letters. And uh, so anyways, we were talking about maybe possibly Jordan and I touring together, doing some, just doing some solo songs, and and then it kind of evolved, and we said, well, why not actually do a an album, create something new for our fans, and so that's... And that's what happened. And we created a, a whole new group and recorded an, a, an entire record of 10 songs. And, new songs? Yeah, totally new songs. And it's really, it's fresh. We're, we're, we're really excited about it. What kind of houses are you going to work in? Uh, well, we're going to be doing House of Blues type venues. Um, the, the actual touring starts September 15th in uh, Nashville. And so then we go all the way to November 22nd. For two full months? Yes. How's the sound different from your music with Backstreet Boys? Um, this, I mean, it, there's similarly similarities. The uh, the group that I come from, you know, it's my style, you know, of t our type of music, and then his from his group. So we kind of just collided and created like a. I, I'd say it's it's it has some urban, you know, influences in it. It has uh, definitely some pop, but it's funky, it's sexy, and it's rhythmic, and um, you know, it's it's got good beats and stuff that we could dance to on stage. You're still the Backstreet Boys, though, right? Yes, so actually. So how do you get time off from a... Very little time to do anything, <laughs> let alone do a TV show on top of that. Um, but I, I find time to to kind of, you know, I I, I like, like I said before, I love to work. I, I love being active, and so you just make time for it. The Backstreet Boys are still work. Are they still the priority, though? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we... Um, are towards the tail end of our world tour uh, of our 20th anniversary um, reunion. Um, we did uh, two runs, two stints in the United States, which were huge. Um, sold over 500,000 tickets total. Went over to Europe, did a huge successful tour over there. And so uh, March of next year, March, April, May, we're going to go over to Southeast Asia, South America, and then than end in, in Australia. So it's, yeah, it's still a priority. Is your appeal still the same audience? It is, actually. It's the same audience, but there's, it's 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 cool. The kind of music that we've actually uh, recorded and, and have done has attracted a younger generation, and maybe that's just passed down from, uh, you know, our previous fans who are Do you see yourselves going on like uh, Aerosmith and the Rolling Stones, like uh, forever? You know, I, I who knows? You, I, I think, we're enjoying our music. You know, we're evolving. We're playing instruments now. We're we're finding ways to to switch it up. And as long as I mean, we might not be able to dance the same way that we do right now. But you know, who knows? When we spoke last year, you said that the Backstreet Boys is more like a family to you. Absolutely, um, it has been. I've been in the group since I was 12 years old. I met them when I was 12. So 
in a lot of ways, they've raised me, influenced me, you know, and and I was able to really have something to compare to when it came to my own family and what was good and what shouldn't, you know. You and Justin Timberlake, were you competitors? No, Justin and I aren't aren't um, com in competition. He is, uh, I'm, when I look at him from afar and I see the, the path that I've been on, you know, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm happy for him that he, that he has, you know, made the best with the opportunities that he was given. For me, um, I wasn't necessarily, I guess, in the right space to do the same things. I Good guess you can call me actor. Yeah, I do. I love acting. I really love it. It's it's a challenge to me, and but I feel like I'm a late bloomer, and I'm okay with that. You know, I feel like the, my best years are to come in my like late 30s and 40s. So who knows what's gonna happen? Do you love when the boy trend started to fade out though? How did you keep going during that era? There was a time when you dipped a lot, right? Uh, yeah. There's been it's been a roller coaster ride. We've gone up and gone down. I, I personally went through those same things that you know Bieber's going through right now that everyone's seeing, except it didn't have the social media to expose it to the degree that it is right now. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, push through it. And I think it's all about being resilient. Just got to stay in the game. Just got to find ways. And then also, too, for me, it was about changing the person that I was before. You know, I didn't like the person that I was prior to who I am now. You know, I've, I, I had to do a lot of work to get to this point, and that comes, you know, from being, doing therapy, that comes from doing all sorts of things in order to make a difference and to change myself. How has the internet affected the music business? Um, I mean, it's uprooted it, it really, but I feel it, that it's done it in a positive way. I think evolution is gonna happen, things are gonna change. This is giving people the opportunity to, to listen to what they wanna listen to, when they wanna listen to it, or watch it at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think the audience it's a good thing. controls things more. Exactly. Uh, you get more time for your life instead of having to sit in front of a television and be, you know, a slave, so Controlled. To speak. Exactly. Up next, we meet Nick's beautiful wife, Lauren Kit Cotter. Stay with us. Ah, you're dead. See? I'm not Take dead. That. That's not yeah. even me. I'm in the other room. You know, when I met Lauren, I was blown away. And I, I looked at this woman, I was like, she gets me. And when I first saw you, I was a little intimidated. Why? You kind of looked a little angry. I was angry. I didn't want to be there. The first night we met, it was like a blind date. I thought you were arrogant. Wow. Standoffish. Nice. Self-involved. Wow. But then when you started talking to me and you opened up, it was better. That was a clip from Nick and Lauren's new reality show, I Heart Nick Carter, which follows the couple leading up to their wedding. Joining us now is Nick's lovely wife, fitness expert and WBFF pro, Lauren Kit Carter. What is WBFF? It's the World Body Beauty Fashion Federation. Um, similar to what Arnold Schwarzenegger used to do, uh, bodybuilding, the Arnold Classics, Mr. Olympia type of uh, federation. It competes. Mm -hmm. So I get up on stage and I, I compete. How long have you been doing that? Um, since 2010, so... Um, Almost, 45 years. Yeah, 45 years. Huh? Nick, you had a reality show uh, nine years ago. Yes, 2006. I did. The House of Carters. That wasn't a positive experience. No, right? it was not. Why? Um, you know, there. I, I was going through some rough times myself personally, and um, you know, with alcohol and you know different things, and I just didn't have my act together, and um, you know, you you kind of put a bunch of people in a house and just let, especially a family who's got issues together. I mean, that's what they want, the recipe for, of course, you know. They want disaster. Yeah, train wreck television. So, so why, Lauren, would you agree to do this now? Um, number one, I never watched The House of Carters because I <coughs> heard so much, um, so negative. many bad, negative things about it. Uh, number two, Nick and I have been together for almost six years, so we have a really strong foundation. And we were together five years before we even um, discussed even doing a show. Um, and lastly, because he really wanted to do this. It was something he needed to do, and he felt very passionate about it. And being his girl, fiance at the time, I supported him and wanted to help him and support him on that journey. Are you enjoying it? So far, yes. I haven't seen any of the episodes yet. Tonight I'll be watching for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm waiting to see what the repercussions are going to be. So you were together a long time before you got married. Yeah, yeah. five you years. You met on a blind date, right? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? 
Uh, my sister actually had been talking about Lauren. They were friends um, a couple years before I had even met Lauren. And she's like, you need to meet this girl, Lauren. She's fantastic. She plays video games. She listens to rock music. You know, she, she doesn't even like Backstreet Boys and everything, and, or boy bands. You need to meet her. I'm like, well, let's meet her. She said the same thing to Lauren. Lauren's like, is he in a boy band? Like, no, I don't want to meet him. So she turned my sister down and me down like two different times. So and how, finally what happened. happened? Finally, uh, she talked her into it, and then she met me, and and it was Where like two magnets. Where did you go on your first date? Um, we were just at his house, um, and it was just like a movie night at his house, and we were just talking in Santa Monica on his balcony, and uh, you know, overlooking the ocean, and shooting star after shooting star was happening as we were talking. And it was really weird. We had a moment where we just looked at each other, and we were both kind of unnerved by these unexpected feelings we were having. What took you so long to get married? I have reservations. I mean, I got. I had issues. I still have issues. That's. I, I love therapists. You know. Um, so. <laughs> um, so. Uh, but that stemmed from my family watching my mother and father break up, watching them fight. You know, uh, seeing growing up in the entertainment business in the mu music industry, seeing so many divorces. Um, yeah, I didn't think love existed. And not and a lot of people around us have happy Did endings. Did you want to get married? Um, no, I never was not one of those girls that fantasized about a wedding or. Um, it wasn't my main priority in life, but as in our relationship, I made lots of sacrifices, and one of those was a career. In order to be with Nick, he's on tour 350 days out of the year. Um, I wouldn't, I couldn't have a career, so I was very, very largely dependent on him. And for me, for myself, I wanted to be secure and know that I was going to be taken care of, and I was gonna, not wasting my time with someone. How do you, did, were you wary of girls because you were well Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've seen the different types of, the types of love that I've known have been sort of the love of a Backstreet Boy. Oh, I love your music. I love, you know, who you are and you being on stage. And so that kind of gets things a little convoluted at times in my they mind. They love the, the vision of you rather than... Exactly. And so trying to find someone. So when I heard that she didn't like boy bands and she really liked rock music, which we share, I love all sorts of music. It's very eclectic. I was like, she's perfect. <laughs> Did you uh, be wary of being married to someone celebrated? Uh, yes, and I was wary of even dating someone celebrated, and um, it was an issue that I that I still deal with now in our relationship. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I mean, why do girls converge on him? Oh, all the time. Yeah, but don't men converge on her? Come on, they're starting to. <laughs> and I... um, yes, but I I handle it different differently than he does. He he has to appreciate his fans, and he has to be nice and welcoming to them because without them, he wouldn't have a career. So we're very thankful for them. So it's a fine line. Your life has been so public, though, right? It has yeah. been, yeah. This is a message we got from a fan of yours, Carolina Dennis, on Facebook, who says, I want them to know that I love to see Nick and Lauren together. Nick is my idol, and I love to see him happy. Kisses from a fan in Portugal. Aw, <laughs> beijos. On the other side of the coin, there have been some fans who've been cyberbullied and threatened you, you, mm -hmm. because you're with him. Yeah. That's, that's Crazy. insane. Yeah, and that's how I... Uh, I Why get do, what are they threatening you with? I've been uh, threatened with a knife in a club and had to get escorted out. Um, someone threatened was threatening to stab me. Um, because you're married to mm -hmm. him. I've had videos sent to me. I've had um, die, you know, things written out like die the Lauren. Pinata. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, someone yeah. sent me a video of a pinata with my face on it and they lit it on fire and beat it up and sent me the video. Um, She's lots half of Mexican. <laughs> It's, but to me, it's like you can't These rationalize. Young girls, yeah, right? and you can't rationalize with irrational people. And I didn't, I couldn't understand that. I couldn't empathize with them because I've never felt that way so strongly. What about do you them. say to her to comfort her from these weirdos? Uh, it's like I said, it's a fine line because I, I've actually gone on to our Twitters or our Instagrams, and I've actually said, you know, you need to stop this. You know, if if you're a fan of mine, or I'll stop following someone who actually has said something hurtful. So I, those are some of the things that I do, and then also, you know, live in a gated community. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything from I Heart Nick Carter that made the newlyweds cringe? We'll find out next. <laughs>
You, well, you've had bad experiences in the past yeah, with reality. No, I, honestly, um, we we didn't watch anything yet. We're waiting to watch it in real so time. So what, as what they do are. you think made you cringe? I, nothing necessarily really bothered me. I mean, we put everything out there. I think we're comfortable with the people that we are now. Do you fight on the show? Well, there's those things will make me cringe, I'm sure. There, there is drama on Just there. Just seeing myself on television will make me cringe. <laughs> really? You don't? Hearing my voice. With someone who's not accustomed to being on film and television, it's a very odd experience. After all the years, you got married in April, right? Mm -hmm. And this followed through to your marriage, right? This show. Mm -hmm. What about it do you like? About the show or marriage? It, no, the marriage. Is there oh. anything different? I mean, you've been together so long. What's I different? feel more secure. I feel I mean, closer we, to him. Yeah, we feel, uh, both of our it's families. Just a piece of paper, isn't it? Yeah, it is just a piece of paper. But, but at the same time, I feel like I can't run, she can't run. And, I mean, it's a commitment. It really is. It's a, it's a great one. In my you quit your job to be with him. Mm -hmm. You ever regret that? No, um, not at all. I, um, Nick, being with Nick has opened up so many more doors and possibilities for me, and I, I learn a lot from him. He's so passionate and so um, intelligent and enthusiastic about what he does. It's it's, it's awe inspiring. How do you compete in fitness? Um, I mean, what do you what do you do? You do jump you, ups. What do you do? Oh no, I do major bodybuilding, um, heavy squats, deadlifts, and other people she, do she heavy. She can I can squat, squat me. him. You know, she'll squat me. <laughs> um, and you get up on stage, and you're you're uh, you get point, uh, you know, scored on how you look, your body, how it looks, in presentation. You've been vocal about your substance abuse problems. You mentioned a little earlier. Was Lauren helpful? Absolutely. She I, she was someone who I am accountable to. Someone who that I want to be healthy for. I mean, I, obviously, I have to be um, good for myself first and foremost, but. But I want to be there through the years and be, um, you know, be the best person that I can be, the best husband that I can be. When you're drinking or you're partying and doing all those things, you're, you're not in your right mind at all. And you're clouded and you're not enjoying the moments that you're given. Had you known about his problems? No. Um, I, th I think, I mean, I knew of Nick, but I never followed the band or their catalog of music. I knew the name, but I wouldn't be able to pick him out in a lineup. But um, <laughs> I, I think I had heard um, of the relationship problems he had in the past in uh -huh. the tabloids, but I really didn't know anything about him. You have a fear going back? Uh, to to, to the person that I was? Yeah. There's, there's definitely a fear. Um, and I think that that fear keeps me motivated. Because if I wasn't afraid, then, you know. You uh, said this recently. You, we both come from imperfect backgrounds and have had many trials and tribulations. What I saw in her was a person who wanted to protect, be with, and who had a soft heart. Did you have a problem with some background? Um, yeah, I, um, I had a, a hard upbringing. I don't have a relationship with my own mother. Um, I struggled with myself with um, alcohol and substance abuse and just, um, just came from broken families um, several times over. And I just related to him and empathized with him on a lot of those Did you issues. go to rehab? Yes, when I was um, a minor. Did that help the fact that both of you had this? Absolutely. So there's a lean on me. A a exactly. Um, you know, Lauren was someone who, that it was difficult for me to find someone who related to the things that I had gone through. And w when I met her, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's layers behind this woman. I mean, I'm deep and I'm screwed up, you know. I need someone mm -hmm. else like me, you know. <laughs> she wasn't screwed up. More screwed I, up. But, but yeah, I, I definitely, um, we empathized. Do you want children? Sometimes. Sometimes? What sometimes, well, sometimes, um, you know, we fantasize about it and we want them and then other times we're just so busy in life that we're thankful we don't have them yet. So you're just, not trying? We're not trying. Um, one day I think we, we will, but right now we're, we still, we're selfish and we enjoy each other. Yeah, but for me, I look at her and I say, you know, this is the reason that I could have children or never wanted it before is because I know that she could make, she could raise those kids to be better than, than I ever had it and she could be the best mother. And that's why I would, would you like to be a mother? Yeah, I would love to. Want to be a father? 
I think I think I think yes I yeah <laughs> yes yes I do of course I'll, I'll commit on this show the time to do it is in the next couple of years but you travel so much mm -hmm. we do travel a lot um, I think for me and her we we just wanted to make sure that we knocked off all the bad stuff as much as we can so that we don't pass that on and we're still doing work with one another and we don't yeah. want to make the same mistakes as our parents did. He has so many fans. What would they be surprised to learn about him? Um, how sensitive and vulnerable and loving he, as a human being, he really is. You know, there's Nick Carter, the boy bander, but then Nick Carter, the human being, is so unbelievably vulnerable and loving and, and, and wonderful, in spite of all the things he's gone through. We'll find out about Nick and Lauren's first impressions of one another right after this. We're back with Nick Carter and Lauren Kit Carter. Don't forget Nick and Knight. They'll be touring and an album is out as well. What was your first impression when you first saw him? Met him? I thought he was um, rude for not standing up and shaking my hand. <laughs> he was cute. But I couldn't even see him. He was in a beanie and a hoodie. Uh, yeah. What was your first impression of her? I thought she was stunning. She looked powerful. She looked mysterious. <laughs> um, and yeah, all those things. Okay, we have some social media questions. Abir Omari, Nick, will you come and perform in the Middle East again? Um, yes, we, well, we're, we have to go back there. We were going to be doing a show in Israel. And uh, two, actually three shows. And unfortunately, they got postponed. So we are coming back there, yes. At UK Wildcats fan, Lauren, besides fitness, what are your other passions? Um, uh, environmental issues, um, philanthropic endeavors, anything that has to do with animal um, cruelty and also um, helping youth, aged out youth. You have a dog? Yes, we, have we two had dogs. two dogs, actually. And, and a hairless cat. A hairless cat? Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the creepy one. Do they get along? They all get along. Yeah. Annabelle Van Wonderen on Facebook. Nick, what's the craziest thing a fan has said or done on your last tour? On the last tour, um, they've been kind of really under control. I mean, really? Nothing, nothing really crazy has happened. Bizarre things have happened in the past. Oh, in the past they have. Oh, yeah, <laughs> people have jumped on stage. Actually, I actually think we did have someone. <laughs> someone actually got on stage and then... You know, storm the stage, and then before you know it, you're looking, and the bodyguards like carrying them. Legs are flying girl. in the air, and yeah, yeah it's always girl. a girl. Isn't mm. it? Yeah, Doesn't that bug you? No. No. Uh, Bryson Knox on Facebook. Nick, any chance of a collaboration with your brother Aaron in the future? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm always open to do stuff with my brother. Um, he's he's kind of in his own little zone right now. He he wants to stand on his own two feet and and do what he's doing right now, but. Um, you know, we're family, and I, I'll totally do it. I love him. I think he's talented. Manola Z on Twitter, what's the funniest moment on your wedding day? My dad's speech. Oh, my God. It was so he, funny. He gave a speech directly after each, the Backstreet Boys gave a speech, and it was, everyone was falling out of their chair laughing. And he's not even a great speech maker. He was just so funny with what he, he said. He's, he's become sort of a surrogate dad. You know, he's a great guy, sweetheart. He's got issues just like all of us. <laughs> but I love him. And, and you just have to see what he said. Oh, my God, it was hilarious. Okay, some uh, questions just uh, if you only knew. Who's the first boy you ever kissed? I think his name was Justin, and it was at the skating rink near the lockers when I was, like, 12. 12? That's late now. <laughs> First girl you ever kissed? Uh, her name was Bryn. And Bryn? Yeah, and she was a, uh, um, we were doing a play together. It was a, like a theater play. Superpower you'd like to have? Um, to eat anything and drink anything and can have an amazing body. <laughs> What's a superpower you like? I love uh, x-ray vision, because I want to just <laughs> yeah, see well, through everything. Describe each other in one word. Beguiling. Um, strong. Batman or Superman? Batman. Yeah, Batman. Wonder Woman or Catwoman? Catwoman. I guess Catwoman, yeah. Like to care about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually favorite, love comic books. Though. Favorite thing to do on a day off? Um, play video games. Play video games. We play them together. You do? Yeah. Pet peeve about one another. What's your pet peeve about it? Everyone's got a pet peeve. Um, I have a pet peeve of him. I purposely bought a laundry basket so that he would put his dirty clothes in the laundry basket. 
but the laundry basket had a lid, so he would just throw them next to the laundry basket because he couldn't. It's just he won't throw his clothes in a laundry basket. <laughs> if he he throws them around. There are people like that. I, and I don't get I, it. Mine go in the laundry basket. I'm working on that. That's What's what your she's pet teaching me. about her? I don't really have any. Wow. I love everything. Nothing. Even the bad stuff I love. Well, there is bad stuff. Well, I don't. Um, there's nothing I can okay. think of that I, I just love it all. What's your favorite song he sings? Um, I love the song Undone um, from Backstreet Boys. But this is awesome. And I love, um, on his new record, I love Paper. Paper? Yeah, Paper, on the new Nick and I album, it's great. Yeah. What's the theme of the song? Um, it's basically you can't have a heart, you know, when it's made of paper. So it's basically talking about it's being it's superficial. It's only a paper moon. Exactly. It's an old song mm -hmm. you probably don't know. Anyway. I'll look it up, I'll iTunes it. Best part about being married? Um, I just, I get to be around her all the yeah. time and no one can take take her away from me. So now that I'm a wife, it's like, oh, my wife's coming with me and she, yeah. you know, it's like, Different you can't word. say anything, yeah. you, you know. It's a hidden talent you have. I paint. You paint? Mm -hmm. And you? Um, I speak Japanese fluently. You gotta hear her. Say something. Where did you learn it? I lived in Tokyo for three years when, in my early 20s. Uh, why? I was there working in a veterinary hospitals. I was a veterinary technician specialist, so I would help with um, surgeries. Give, give me a little Japanese. Um, Konnichiwa, Roren desu. Hajime mashite. Yoroshiku o negatashimasu ne. And what did you say? I said, hello. Um, nice meeting you. My name is Lauren. Please think very highly of me. <laughs> I think highly of both of you. Thank you so thank much. Thanks very much. You were thank terrific. Thank you. I'd like to thank my guests, newlyweds Nick Carter and Lauren Kit Carter. And make sure to watch their reality show, I Heart Nick Carter, Wednesdays, 10 Eastern on VH1. And go buy Nick's new album, Nick at Night, available now. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.